Good morning. Welcome to your Monday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. We are off to quite the start today at a 7.30 meeting that is already canceled. <laughs> That's okay. That opens up a little time for getting ready for the trip and getting ready for some meetings I have this week. So divine unfolding, divine unfolding. And um, the card for today is a little longer card. So I, it's probably good that I don't have to rush. Good morning, Susan. Welcome, welcome. You're the first one here today. Yay, you. I'm going to grab a drink here. Very dry here. I think we are at, I think it's at minus 15 with the wind chill. So the heat is running, heat is running, heat is running. Good morning, Joe Bell. Glad you are here. Welcome. Glad to have everybody rolling in. So... Hope everybody is staying warm. I mean, I think even the people in the southern end are a little chilly. Good morning, Gwen. Good, good morning, good morning. Very cold there, too. Yep, yep. Well, we'll just, I've got my little fuzzy sweater on, thanks to St. Vinny's. Quite happy with that. Good morning, Cindy. Welcome. So I'm actually going to have a little extra time today than what I thought I would, so I can do some prep on things and... Uh, I've got a pitch to make to all of you once everybody's on here. Um, and we do have a wild Quan Yin card today. Good morning, Abigail. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And as you know, those tend to be a little longer cards, but uh, always useful cards, always very in-depth. And the, I love the artwork on the cards. I think this artist is amazing. I believe he's in China. Um, Maybe, yeah, I think maybe China. Good morning, Peggy. Welcome. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we finished up last night with Tony Robbins Business Mastery. And so now I have all kinds of good things to implement. And uh, one of them, I want to conscript my tribe of practical rebels. So anyone want to volunteer? Say I. Good morning, Janine. Welcome, welcome. What I would like to do is... I'm going to be doing an overhaul of my coaching business and I want input. And good morning, Beth. Welcome. Glad you're here. You all are a prime group of people for me to pick your brains. Um, you got stuck in Phoenix. Ah. Oh. All right. Everybody send up good energy for Gwen to be able to make it to Hawaii. And I'm sure, Beth, you're still in the sunshine, right? Um Send good energy. We'll, we'll get Gwen on her way here for today. I have to check in with my friend Kayleen also and see if she actually, she was in Rochester waiting to board her plane. Hopefully she made it to Isla Mujeres and uh, Saturday I fly out. So I'm already thinking about what all do I want to experience while I'm there and do. I want to, I want to do a lot of being. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Lucy. Welcome. So, thank you for the sunshine. So that is uh, on my mind also. What do I want to take? I think I want to take a sketch pad. I don't sketch much, but I think that might be connecting. There we go. We're reconnecting. I don't think the cold is doing the internet any good either. Anywho, what I want to pitch for my tribe of practical rebels, there's nine of you on here right now, and I know usually by the end of the day, Roughly 100 people have watched. I want to do a little uh, giveaway. So what I'm going to do is someone is going to get a free coaching session with me. And in order to get put in the pot from which I will draw, and I'm not sure how long I'll keep it open. I might keep it open. Good morning, Betty. Glad you are here. Welcome. I might keep it open the duration of while I'm gone, or I might do it short and tell who's the winner, and then um, we'll just get set up for when I get back. But I'm giving away one coaching session, so 50 minutes of holistic coaching with me for free when you submit an answer to a question. And you can send it to my email, which is bonnie at empowermentandpurpose.com. Bonnie at EmpowermentAndPurpose.com. And I'll probably create a little um, graphic that I'll put on various ones of my social media to um, gather this information. But the, the question I want to ask you is, and you can take whatever time you need to think about it, 
what are the top three things in your life that you would like me to help you with? And the reason I'm asking is, yes, I'm going to work with one of you one-on-one. -on -one. I work with any of you one-on-one -on -one if you decide you want to do a little coaching package. But one of you gets a free session for answering this question. What if anything, if you could have some help, it's IE, Lucy, IE. Thank you. If um, one of you, if you could work on anything that you wanted to work on. So it might be you want to work on marital stuff. It might be you want to work on low self-esteem. It might be you want to work on changing your job, um, losing some weight, quitting smoking. I'm thinking of the way that people talk to me about the things they want to work on. Or you're just in that place of knowing you're supposed to be doing something more, but you have no idea what. Or you're stuck in, um, this is the way it's always been, so this is the way it's always going, kind of um, the mediocre life that you know isn't what you're supposed to be living. Whatever it is, top three things. Top three. Just pitch them to me. And then... Um, I'll gather all that information. The reason, again, the reason I'm asking is I want to be, thank you. I want to be able to um, target some of my efforts in terms of, like I just did the, the um, audio program on clutter clearing. One of the reasons that one came up was people began to say to me, I was, I was seeing across sessions with people that clutter was something that was giving them a problem. So that's why I did that one. I also did one that hopefully soon my VA Morgan and I will turn into another um, purchasable evergreen thing, audio probably, is I had a five session learning how to sell because many of us are entrepreneurs and we're really good at what we do but then we open a business and we're not really good at running a business and we don't know how to market ourselves and etc etc so I took my Mary Kay training which was bar none and funneled it into a five session thing where I worked with entrepreneurs to help them know how to pitch their stuff and here's the thing how many people who have a small business say, oh, I hate sales. I love my stuff, but I hate sales. Here's the deal. When you don't sell, people don't know your awesome stuff. Good morning, Amy. Welcome. So really, you are doing people a disservice by not selling because they don't know you're out there. My friend Kayleen is a classic example. When she has a program and she makes these amazing programs, she puts it out there far less than I would, far less. And my story to her and to everybody with regard to that is I put out a program and I sent out repeated emails. And the day before it was a live, they, they showed up, it was a workshop. The day before, one of my closest people called me and said, Bonnie, I just saw the email that you're doing this, this workshop retreat thing. Can I still come? And I said, yeah, but do me a favor. Go in your emails and search at the top for the title of the workshop. She had six unopened emails. The seventh one, for whatever reason, caught her attention and she opened it. And she came and she had a great time and whatever. But if I hadn't put it out there seven times, she never would have come. She never would have come. So for those of you who own small businesses and the sales just isn't your baby... That would be a great <clears throat> course to take when I get it ready and up and running. But I want to know what else do I need to get ready and up and running that would be of use to you. Some people can't afford individual coaching. It's, it's not a luxury. It's a necessity if you want to move forward in your life. But not everybody can afford it or they believe they can't. I personally move heaven and earth to make sure I can do the stuff I need to do that's going to take care of me. And it pays off in spades. That's another story for another day. Anywho, so I will get that that uh, contest up and running and gather information from all of you about what are the top three things you'd like me to help you address. So, but for today, drum roll, little drum roll, makes you guys wiggle. Wild Kuan Yin, Wild Kuan Yin, Alana Fairchild. Love these cards. Love these readings. Again, they're a little longer, but so impactful. 
So a couple of nice deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Let your shoulders drop in through the nose, out through the mouth. It's a good thing I have a chiropractor appointment tomorrow. You can feel it right between my shoulder blades. They had us jumping around and carrying on. So yes. So here's our card for today. Let's see if I can get all the all the aspects in there. It is the slave dances into freedom. The slave dances into freedom. And this is including physical slavery, but it's also mental, emotional, spiritual slavery. So let's see where it might fit for you. The slave dances into freedom. Yep, we had a freeze. Isn't that interesting? Right at the beginning of the card, we had a freeze. So I'm going to keep the book up here a little bit so that I can see if it does it again so that we don't miss any of this good stuff. Here it is. I overcome restraint, imprisonment, and conflict with a great with a greater power that that of love. So love will conquer all. All right. You have been on a path that no longer serves your highest good. Hmm. What comes to mind? What path have you been on that is no longer serving you? Whether you believe you have chosen that path or it seems to have taken on a life of its own through habit and momentum. The time has come for you to be free of it. I shall free you from the negative influence of even the most persistent struggle or devastating conditions with one simple gesture. She's powerful. She's a powerful entity. And, and think about that. For those of you who focus very much on God, this is an aspect of God. God is in everything, right? There, there is nothing that is not God. So... Here we are. Do not be attached to the war you have endured. My beloved wild warrior, it is over by my grace. You are enslaved no longer. It is your time to step forward. You are granted a free pass by the hand of grace, and a new reality of freedom is yours. Feel no guilt or fear over this. It is your time to dance from slavery into freedom. Others will join you when their time comes. No longer are you required to go into battle. Come join my joyful dance of freedom. And the thing about you dancing into freedom now is you're, you're modeling for others how to do this, what this looks like. And you might have people say, well, easy for you, blah, 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 and whatever their excuse is for not taking the steps to free themselves. But it's an excuse, and we know Argue for your limitations, and you get to keep them. A war is over for you. It is not a matter of it becoming less difficult or you being able to handle it with more finesse. It is simply finished. It might seem to have been dragging on for so long that you have come to believe it is just the way life will always be. Or perhaps this ending is abrupt, as though something that could have developed into a truly difficult and long-term struggle has unexpectedly been brought to a swift end. No matter what the circumstances may be, or whether you think something should be ending now, the higher truth is that you have been granted honorable discharge from karmic duty completed. Isn't that a lovely way to think about it? I've been granted an honorable discharge from karmic duty completed. Soon you will be experiencing life in a completely different way, free from a legacy of darkness that once held you down, trapped in conflict that perhaps even became bitter, disheartening, and draining. That darkness might have held you enthralled in an internal pattern of repetitive suffering and struggle. Or it might have been your seduction, dominance, or enslavement to the power of another person or any external set of circumstances, Think alcohol, think drugs, think gambling, think workaholism, all of the things that we get hooked into. Think social media, whatever it is. This taste of freedom bestowed shall not only be sweet, it shall be utter and complete. This oracle does not foretell a temporary shift in energy or a limited respite from the struggle. It foretells a deeper and more far-reaching change. It indicates nothing but a complete and clean ending and a fresh new start in an entirely upgraded field of consciousness, 
where enslavement is replaced with freedom. And doesn't that feel like what's going on in our world? All the belches, wheezes, and coughs are leading us to an entirely upgraded field of consciousness. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. You may believe this to be nearly impossible, but it is what has been decreed by the Divine Mother, and so shall be. Know that you have been freed from service within the ranks of soldiers, even from within the ranks of generals. This grant has come from the higher ranks of spiritual servers, who have noted that you have obtained all the benefit possible from your struggles now, courage, strength, faith in the absence of obvious signs. Good morning, CJ. Welcome. Such struggle has served its purpose and run its course. It's done. The Oracle of the Slave Dances into Freedom speaks of a profound shift in consciousness, a liberation from enslavement in a state of being based on opposition, struggle, and suffering. We are so moving into cooperation and collaboration, so I'm going to give you my story about that. Let me take a drink quick. So, at the beginning of last week's five-day Tony Robbins business mastery extravaganza, they gave us a task. There were, I think, 2,800 people on the call from 56 countries, and they put us into groups, and then they gave us a task. And it was a very open-ended task. We really had to figure out what we were doing, what they were even asking of us, and what was okay and what wasn't okay, what was possible, what wasn't possible. And some people had obviously done business mastery before, and so they already knew. We were set up from the beginning. Good morning, Lisa. Welcome. Because they called it a competition. So that creates a mindset, doesn't it? So the gist of it was we were supposed to create something that benefited people, right? So all these groups got going. Our group had six people. We even had difficulties trying to figure out how to connect with each other because we had people in Australia and all over the place on our team. And we moved ourselves forward and we created something cool. However, there were two groups that blew the competition away. And the the group that actually won, there was a young woman. I, I would say she had to be in her early 30s, if that. She may have been in her late 20s. She was a leader. Holy crap, you guys. She's, she was ex-military, and she just took charge of that team. And um, the, the thing they chose to work on was um, the suicide rate among veterans. 22 veterans a day kill themselves. And so she organized her team. She invited, she invited other teams to participate on her team. So she drew people together. It's supposed to be a competition. She moved it into collaboration and cooperation instantly. Over the course of the five-day challenge, they raised over $30,000 for veterans in terms of preventing suicide amazing team, amazing collaboration and cooperation. You could see that mindset shift. So this is happening. This is already happening. And it's so cool. Let's see. I'm going to read that sentence again. The Oracle of the Slave Dances into Freedom speaks of a profound shift in consciousness, a liberation from enslavement in a state of being based on opposition, struggle, and suffering. Even if you happen to believe in what you were fighting for, though, of course, this oracle also applies if you have had little passion for the war you were in. This previous way of being created struggle and friction, allowing you to move forwards a step only to fall back. To gain ground in your journey only to have another try to steal it away with undermining behavior, sabotage, anger, and other forms of fearful resistance. Good morning, Becky. Glad you are here. This created a state of war in your own being. When we're at war with ourselves, how able are we to move forward? So this is declaring the war is over. You had to fight for what you wanted nearly constantly. It might have been a war you were waging within yourself between heart and head or body and mind, between being who you truly are 
and who you believed you had to be to gain acceptance or to be successful in the material world. How many women have had to step into all of the divine masculine? Well, men too. We all have divine feminine and divine masculine within us. How many of us have defaulted to the divine masculine to try to make it in the world? Not anymore. It might also have been a war in your external world, a bitter custody battle, a relationship breakup, a recovery from substance abuse, an abusive relationship or work situation where you have been fighting to gain your sense of self, sense of respect, peace, love, or gentleness. It may be that your life has been such a struggle for survival, financial or otherwise, even though you have worked hard to have faith. And again, I'm going to make that comment that faith arises out of not knowing what's going to happen. If you can see the whole path, you don't have to have faith. Those challenges, the not being able to see where you're going, the not knowing what's next, the not knowing where to put your foot, that's what generates faith. Perhaps circumstances have not really changed for you and you are truly feeling at the end of your ability to hope, about to give up and slip into deep darkness, despair, or depression. Or perhaps you have been at war with life, believing it is not right as it is and that it must be changed, and have constantly plunged headfirst into battle with all that is. And then we go back to the Byron Katie stuff, right? Loving what is, not just accepting it, if you hate it, but embracing it. What am I meant to learn from this? Good morning, Sharon. Welcome. Glad you are here. What am I meant to learn from this? All right. The divine loves your fighting spirit, but you are to be protected from a too long battle that could poison your beautiful heart with bitterness, leaving you depleted. Instead, it is recognized that you are in need of solace, sweetness, and a sense of purposeful passion that does not dry you out, but fills you up. I'm glad this is hitting the nail on the head. Fabulous. Good, good, good. But fills you up and allows you to offer healing to the world rather than trying to bend the world to your will. No matter how your war has manifested, in obvious or more subtle ways, know this, it is coming to an end. Sometimes when we have been at war, in constant struggle for prolonged periods of time, we forget there is another way. The habit of struggle becomes ingrained in us. We perceive stress and threat where there is none. It is the car backfiring and the person reacting as though it were a gunshot. It is a simple remark made without intention to hurt that feels like a full-blown attack. How many of us have that, right? We are reactive. We have our wounds that we carry with us that get poked by innocuous things. People don't mean to hurt our feelings. People don't mean to upset us, but something happens. And when we have those reactions, those are our opportunities. Those are our opportunities to stop for a moment, step back into our curious observer and say, I wonder why I'm reacting like this. Where is this coming from? What are the cords I haven't cut? What are the wounds I haven't healed that are feeding this reaction I don't like? Okay. Perhaps our ingrained reactions are more internal. We believe the world is out to get us, that people want to harm more often than help, that it is less likely we'll receive goodwill and encouragement, and more likely we'll meet envy, jealousy, fear, sabotage, and nastiness in human relationships. I have one client from the past who talked about scenarios, how her traumatized brain ran scenarios all the time, and so we talked about that. Yes, absolutely. We all are on this path of healing, right? We're blessing ourselves on this path to healing. But she would talk about how much time she spent in these scenarios, trying to be prepared for every potential negative outcome that could happen. And that 99% of those negative outcomes never materialized. What a colossal waste of her energy, right? So although your freedom is going to be granted in an instant, you may not register it immediately. Perhaps you'll need some time to process this divine intervention and realize its effect. Good morning, Bobby. Glad you are here. 
welcome, welcome. Looking forward to yoga today. It may be a short or long time, but the adjustment period will need to take place. So don't worry if you're like, okay, I didn't get the big fireworks and aha today. Allow, allow, be as open as you can be to this coming your way. Good morning, Robin, glad you are here. Welcome, welcome, we're up to 18 people. This is fabulous. And I'll, I'll finish this and then I'm gonna run my pitch again, all right? I want you to help me out here, guys. One can feel great joy at the end of the struggle, yet after that initial sense of exhilaration, it can seem rather disorienting too. When we've been fighting, 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 fighting against something, and it's no longer there to fight against, now what? Now what? It is great to be free, but what does one now do? <laughs> what happens to all the energy and focus you used to invest in the struggle? You may fall into an exhausted heap as you recover from the spiritual marathon you have been undertaking, and that is natural and to be accepted. However, soon enough, that recovery will be completed sufficiently and you will be ready to live your life again anew. You may have questions, even confusion for a time. How do I live differently? Isn't that a beautiful question? How do I live differently? How do I think and behave in a way that reflects a new life rather than the old, outdated struggle? This may be quite perplexing when the war has consumed body and mind, perhaps taken a prominent place in your psyche, perhaps becoming the issue upon which you project all your anxieties, hopes, and fears. I oftentimes would see that with people when they first came into counseling. So, they walk in the door, we do the introductions, I say, how can I help you? And they launch into the story, right? I'm a survivor of sexual abuse. I, you know, we, there we go. I, I have ADD. Um, you know, my mom died when I was two. Whatever the story is. And many of them hung on to their story because it was their definition of who they were. And the work was to free them from the story. Yes, it was a part of their history, and it's not going to be erased, but it's not their definition of who they are. That's too limiting a definition. There's much more to who we are than what happened to us, okay? So, and yet, the greater the war was for you, the sweeter the relief shall be now, and the bigger the opportunity for something different now in your hands. Isn't that lovely? You don't have to understand how this can be. We don't need to know the how. How is not our gig, right? The universe will take care of the how. We're just looking at why. Why am I now invested in this new life, this new path? Why am I willing to deal with I don't know where I'm going in order to get where I'm going? Why, why, why? That's our part. It doesn't have to logically resolve itself. Not everyone you know needs to be in the same place that you are entering. They may still need to be in that war for a time. It may be sad to leave some of your former comrades behind. Yet, if they are not ready to leave the battlefield, and if they cannot accept that you are no longer fighting that war, there may not be much hope for continued connection, at least until they are also ready to move on. You need to move on. That's what this is telling you. You need to move on. Whether or not they choose to join you is up to them. For now, focus on you. It may be that your thriving beyond the war zone becomes an inspiration that empowers others to make similar choices. I think about a woman here who um, runs a program that helps people transition out of um, using and into recovery. And she uses herself as a model. She is now the CEO, but she was where they were 18, 20 years ago. So accept this gift for yourself without condition. You have been discharged by divine decree. Your release is unconditional. You don't have to do anything to earn it or grab it or hold on. It is given now. The healing process, which comes on the next page, <laughs> will be your way of accepting the discharge papers for duties fulfilled and your pass into a new life. Take your time. Be gentle. 
Get used to living in a different way and surrender into your prayers daily, perhaps through this healing process, for as long as is needed to completely integrate your blessing of liberation. Don't be afraid to celebrate your own happiness and leave the war zone, physical, psychological, emotional, behind you now. Freedom is yours. So here's the healing ceremony. Fabulous, Susan. Fabulous. I agree. We're going to work on how I live differently past the trauma I've been in. Yes, the trauma does not define you. There are gifts that you will take out of that trauma that will become your lessons moving forward. You then can use those lessons to teach to other people. Good morning, Peg. Glad you are here. Welcome, welcome. So we're about to do the healing process. You can go back and do this over and over and over again. So remember the Tosha Silver piece we read the other day where someone was embroiled in this totally acrimonious divorce and she had to go through the healing process multiple times to, to detach herself from that calcified battle. All right, so here we go. Sit quietly with the palms of your hands turned upwards as if to receive around the level of your heart. So you're just holding your hands right at heart level. I want you to close your eyes and just breathe. I'm going to settle you into this a little bit first before we start the words. Nice deep belly breaths. The war is over. It is done. You are being granted divine discharge for karmic duty served. It is time to move on. You may not know where you're going post-discharge, but do not fret that. Do not worry about that. You will be guided on every step. All right? So say the following out loud. You don't have to speak it loudly, just clearly, and with quiet confidence from your heart. So we'll do call and response. I'll say it. You repeat it out loud for yourself. I gratefully receive unconditional release. from the wars that have been ravaging my body, mind, and soul. From my heart, I offer gratitude to Kuan Yin, who loves me unconditionally. And I give thanks for the unconditional karmic grace that frees me now and allows me to experience new life. I call on those beings who love me unconditionally. There we go to assist in the process of healing and adjusting my physical body, emotional body, etheric body, mental body, and all energy fields. Help me integrate the blessing of liberation as swiftly and deeply as possible with naturalness and grace. I honor the learning of the past and I forgive myself and all involved in it. I no longer need to hold on to anything I trust completely in the new beginning that is being given to me. What needs to carry through from the past into the future will do so with divine love. And what no longer needs to be held 
shall be released freely and completely. Restoration and intervention are given to me now through divine decree. I am free, I am free, I am free. With peace in my heart and gratitude in my mind, I am thankful for this release. Through my own free will, so be it. Rest for a moment, perhaps with your eyes closed, with both palms facing upwards at the heart to receive blessing. Couple of nice deep breaths. Then open your eyes, place your hands in prayer position, and bow your head. You have completed your healing process. How awesome was that? And again, you can go back over and over and do the prayers again, do the whole reading again. But the slave dances into freedom. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. I hope that feeds your heart and soul today on this very cold day. I'm going to do my pitch again. There's 15 of you on here now. I am offering, yes, I love that. That's beautiful. I'm offering one free coaching session with me for some feedback. I'd like you to send me the top three things you'd like to work on. You are welcome, Amy. You are welcome. If you had the opportunity to work with a coach, if you had the opportunity to work with me, what are the top three things you would like to work on, you would like to address? And you can send them to me in an email, bonnie at empowermentandpurpose.com. And I'm going to gather them all together. I'll probably put up, like I said, a little little graphic on some of my social media and gather all this information. So all I need is your name, email, phone number if you want to give it to me. But the top three things, you if you had the opportunity for coaching, what would you want to work on? Because I'm going to be making some programs and putting together some stuff and I want to see what all of you are. Thank you, Cindy. I want to see what all of you are. My practical rebels, my tribe, are looking to heal within yourselves so that I can target what it is I'm going to offer. So have an awesome Monday. I will see you again tomorrow. Remember, you are capable of far more than you think you are. Love you all. Bye-bye.